Welcome back to the Nom Survival Campaign. This is episode 3. We left off after a pretty brutal attack, and we're going to just get to looting here. We're going to end up with a Type 56 AK and an RPG, which is pretty refreshing after using that bolt action for a little while. This is going to be pretty nice. A lot of carnage left behind after that attack. This Type 56, not my absolute favorite when it comes to the SOG DLC weapons. I am pretty partial to the M16 variants that they have. There's so many cool ones in like the M14 or M1 carbine. But we don't have access to a lot of that stuff yet until some of the later days. And this AK is going to be a pretty, pretty refreshing change. Now... You can tell already that my stamina has went down the drain. I'm carrying way too much stuff. Just remember, guys out there, don't get too greedy. You know, if you don't have stamina, you're going to be hurting in a combat situation. So uh, I'm going to figure that out here in a minute once I realize I've got too many magazines in my book bag. But it's getting about nightfall and we need to start thinking about getting some more defenses going and cleaning up the base a little bit before we get attacked again. It gets really dark at nighttime and the only lights that you're gonna have are some of our overhead lights and there's spotlights that you can use on these mounted M60s and we've got some headlamps and stuff. Let me go ahead and kind of reset these. Sometimes your static weapons will want to kind of glitch a little, but if you just pick them up and put them back down, they tend to reset back to terrain normal. Let's check on our officers here, our intel tent. Everybody's still alive, so our mission is still going. We're doing good. All right, it's getting dark pretty quick. We're going to pop on our crew goggles. Our crew goggles will give us an ace personal interaction. It's going to say headlamp. And those crew goggles are actually just our headlamp. And it's just really useful for running around the base and um, building stuff. Let's recruit some guys. We'll try to top off some of our base units here with another wave of reinforcements. Yeah, that headlamp does pretty good out here in the dark. It's not a great shooting light. Although you don't really want to have this light on during a gunfight because they will single you out pretty quickly. Our Jeep is in decent shape. This guy, let's see what he's got. I always want more first aid kits and frag grenades, but we're full. We, we're just carrying too much junk right now. But we'll just go ahead and bag them up. We don't have to have that stuff. Just being a little loot goblin out here. I'm going to go to the tent real quick because I think I'm hurt. But I'm actually just over encumbered. But you can use, there's like a an ad action on the tent that comes kind of vanilla. That you can like heal without using a first aid kit which is pretty nice. Alright, while we're at it we'll bag these guys up. And I think we'll go ahead and start kind of stacking our body bags over here. Seems like a good enough spot, especially since these guys are already going to be kind of lined up. Right. Check on this guy. And... So you can drag them or carry them. So the drag is kind of the classic ace way to do this um it's pretty slow it's slow but you can still use your weapon so there's some like pros and cons you can still shoot while you drag if you have plenty of guys online and you have time for this kind of thing go ahead and use it for the immersion factor it looks cool but i have enabled these body bag objects to be able to be carried as well if you carry them you can run with them and I just you know let's check on the truck real quick engine is shredded I love that for us that's gonna be great 
We'll have to repair that later. We're going to need this truck in the later days where we start running missions out into the bush. So being able to carry them like this and kind of run around with stuff, you know, it's not the most realistic thing, but there are certain parts of this mission that have been kind of, you know, nerfed or made just more arcadey for ease of use. There's There has to be kind of a fine balance between immersion, realism, and just fun, you know, what's going to make stuff fun. All right, we'll fast forward through some of those, that body bag collecting, and that's going to bring us into our next attack here. So we've got a moderate attack coming from the northeast side. I'm going to shine the light on them. I can see a couple dudes on the ridge line there already. Go ahead and kill that headlamp. We'll see what this AK can do real quick. That's a pretty good refreshing change from that protection. This gun though, you will find, it's just not the most accurate. It's got a, the cool bayonet, you can have the melee function, but you just kind of need to take your time with it, use it in some auto if you can. Alright, we're gonna climb on top of this thing real quick. In hindsight, probably shouldn't be up here. But I want to get, I'm trying to get cheeky with this RPG. Now I noticed right there, that fire is coming from our static mounted M60. So I try to shoot kind of away from it. I end up whiffing it into the ground. So kind of a waste of an RPG. This guy, I can't seem to hit him, but once we take our time, yeah, I guess I'm just hitting the gun. Well, let's take our time and look through the sights. Lucky for me, this dude doesn't seem like he graduated in the top of his class, or else we would have been smoked standing on top of this thing. And that looks like it's it for that, that attack. Go ahead and reload our RPG here. I'm just getting greedy with RPG. You know, sometimes you get it, you don't get to use it, so might as well sling a couple while you can. Yeah, we're looking good. Alright, let's get down from here. And I think we'll just go ahead and get back into working on our defenses and making sure we're good for the morning. I think some of our dudes got hit a little here, yeah. So we see we got a guy over here healing up. We got two guys incapacitated. It looks like three. There's this guy right here too. I don't see him get up, but um, he's not there in a moment. I would heal this guy, but our AI medics, you know, they tend to do a pretty good job. They got it handled. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that guy's gonna be okay. Danger! Here comes our reinforcements right now on the helo, and that's going to be nice, kind of top off our guys here. We'll definitely make it through the night with that. Now I'm starting to realize that I've got these F1 SMG magazines in my vest and in my book bag that I definitely don't need. Keep in mind that I'm dumping these magazines into these boxes. These are some of the persistent boxes. Um, the ones that are not persistent, remember, are the ones that come in at our 12 o'clock daily airdrop, like our supply drop. Those boxes come in daily, and, you know, if you're here for 100 days, then you're going to have 100 boxes, and that's going to bog the server down. So those boxes will despawn when you turn the server off. So just make sure you get anything you want out of them. Go ahead and transfer it into some of the persistent boxes. I'm checking now because there's some tracers coming from the southeast. And yeah, there's a little bit. There's some gunfire down there. Doesn't look like anything too substantial. 
looks like maybe it's just one guy. Could just be, you know, could be just a machine gun nest or something. Or just some guy, you know, trying to get a lucky shot on that helicopter. I think we're not going to worry about it too much. Alright, here comes our fresh crop of dudes. Yeah, that ought to do it. finish some of these fortifications here and then clean up some more of these bodies. Check out this M60 real quick and it's done for as well which is just terrible. These mounted M60s are so so useful for this base defense and when they get taken out like that it hurts pretty good. Now I am heavily considering in one of the next updates implementing some sort of script that allows you to repair those static MGs that have been knocked out. Maybe if you have more than one then you can combine the part, interchange some parts in order to get one of them back up and running which <clears throat> It definitely could work, you know, it's just having them all the way knocked out and just sitting there. You can't even move them once they're, once they're knocked out. It's, it's not ideal. So I'm going to be looking into that. Now we'll just place some of these up here. It's kind of nice to be able to Lego some of these things together and make these little keyholes for yourself. Make a little fighting position, however you, you think. There's a lot of different pieces that you can put together to customize your defenses out here. Now we've made it to the morning here of the first day. Technically the days roll over at noon. So we're still in day one and we're going to hit day two once we hit 12 o'clock with that day-night cycle. The days are longer than the nights. The nights are pretty cool but I've made them kind of shorter because you, you get to where you know, you can't see, and if that night lasts too long, it's not very fun. I am going to start working on this little common area for us, getting some protection for, like, maybe a fallback position, which is pretty important since the enemy can break through your frontal defenses, and you may have to fall back and fight them from, like, you know, like an Alamo position at some point. Especially if you don't have many AI units to help you out. Right, that's looking good. Pop a couple more of these down. That southern defense is pretty important because they come over that hill and they're already pretty close to the base. Get our body bag situation figured out. Go ahead and bag these guys up. There we go. I need to keep an eye on my food and water. My water is at 67 right now. I'm due for a drink. If it gets too low, then I'll start racking up fatigue passively. The map's looking pretty good. The towns, we haven't even touched them. You can see the numbers next to them of the enemy strength still in those towns and the AA positions out there. There's still two AA positions at least. Those positions are approximate. Uh, we're getting pings from the those areas, but that's not an exact marker. You still need to make a mission, some kind of side mission out there to go find those, but that's on you to kind of organize that and make that happen. Because without the, uh, taking out those AA positions, you're not going to be fielding many air assets. And if you try to fly south, you'll figure out why. Now, we're getting a pretty sizable attack from the north. And 
we're catching this attack a little bit early. They're still in the tree line. We don't. I've got no visual on anyone, but they're going to be on us pretty soon. So I, I get an idea on what I want to do with these about this, and we're going to pull a little bit of a ballsy move while we're ahead of the curve here. Now I've got some some of the M18 purple smokes. Remember your purple smokes hang on to those because that's what we're going to use to call support. You can call a scout chopper or a CAS aircraft to help you out. In this case, I'm going for an F4 Phantom um, CAS strike, which is going to give us some rockets as well as napalm. So I just need to get up a little bit closer. We're going to use our ace action to radio for CAS. It's going to tell us it's waiting for purple smoke. Pop smoke, throw it as far as you can. That napalm is going to strike in a pretty big area, so you want to make sure you get away from wherever you throw that smoke, and don't throw it too close to base. Let's back up in this defilade right here. They are starting to come in kind of close. This should be pretty good timing. We're just going to crawl back and wait this out. The F4s typically ingress from the north northeast so we're gonna just try to look that way here he is right here see if we can get good effect on target and we're gonna find out how this attack goes in the next episode we'll see you there